I mean, I was a really nasty little girl. Sally Ann dared to speak out. I think that was her fatal mistake. I mean, I wanted to make money and make plenty of it. She was perhaps the first great whistleblower. Fetishes were where all the money was. What did they pay for that privilege? Five hundred dollars an hour. One of the problems with Sally is that um, she was a raving drug addict. Oh, I suppose it's very possible I'm bad. But I'm good too. There's good in me too. So, well, Sal, I'm not home by six o'clock. You know, they've killed me. It was like she was on a mission. <laughs> and she was strong. She'd become a high-profile target. I think she was aware that she was going to be murdered. I think she knew she was going to die. I could probably name four or five or six people that would have the potential and the motivation to kill Sally Ann. I thought this guy murdered her. I presume you have a personal view on her kill, Sally Ann Huxton. I do. Who killed her? In life, she was larger than life. Sally Ann Huckstep turned heads. She was the prostitute turned informer who exposed the crooks and the crooked police who did business with them. It was the early 80s. It was the cross in Sydney. Sally Ann named names. Characters like standover man, Nettie Smith, and Detective Sergeant Roger Rogerson, the man who gunned down the love of her life, Warren Lanfranchi. She told the courts and the media that her boyfriend had been set up and murdered, and her accusations didn't stop there. Overnight, it made her famous, but it also made her vulnerable, and she knew it. I knew Sally Ann Huckstep. She was attractive, sharp, vivacious, unreliable. And she had a terrible weakness for drugs, drama, and dangerous men. I'm Mike Willisey. In 1982, Sally Ann told me that she believed she would be murdered. Less than four years later, police pulled her body from a pond in Centennial Park. No one has been convicted of that crime, a crime it seems everyone predicted. In the early 80s, we were not able to show her story for legal reasons. But tonight, you'll see Sally Ann Huckstep tell her story in her own words. But now we add the final chapter. Who killed Sally Ann Huckstep? She is 17, she is pregnant, and she has already started her working life as a prostitute. This home movie of Sally Ann has not publicly been seen. It's the 70s. While other girls talked of puberty blues and wagging school, Sally Ann was selling her looks on the streets of King's Cross. And that's where she returned nearly a decade later to show me the life she had lived and survived. Sally Ann, what's your strongest memory of being a street girl on the cross? Parading up and down Darlinghurst Road, probably. It sounds very degrading. Did you see it like that? Yes. Even more so when you run into someone you went to school with or, um, you know, a friend of the family or... Did that happen? Oh, yes. Too often. What would you do? At first I used to hide. <laughs> but then after a while I just... I 
say hello and keep working. Uh, I became very hard. I mean, I, I, I really, I mean, I hated myself. I hated being a junkie. I, I found myself, I, I knew I was really slipping, sort of going uh, downhill very rapidly. And uh, I hated my clients. I hated the customers. So how did you act towards them? I was very rough. I wasn't very nice at all. I mean, I wouldn't let them touch me. They'd been drinking. I wouldn't even let them breathe on me. I mean, if they didn't get dressed quick enough, I used to just take their clothes and put them out in the corridor and make them get dressed up. They, I mean, I was really nasty with a girl. The reasons for young girls to start selling their bodies and shooting heavy drugs in places like this are varied. Sally Ann's reason was almost too bad to be true. She says her boyfriend asked her to become a prostitute when she was 16. He was a thief and a heroin addict and he needed the money. She went firstly to a brothel in Kalgoorlie, Western Australia. Kalgoorlie brothels are remnants of a past era. The girls actually live in the brothels and are restricted in their movements about the town by a set of unwritten rules. Quite a place for a young teenager to start a career. Coming back here after 10 years is really hard. I forget the faces and the names and... The fan, I've never forgotten the fan. If you're a hooker, you've got to be very careful of uh, disease. I mean, because it puts you out of business and you don't make any money. So, um, clients used to come in and it, you'd put your light on and throw them under the light and check them for VD and assorted ailments. And this was the second most important place in the room. It's very hard to come back and face the beginning of all the bad times. Uh, coming back here stirs up so many mixed emotions in me. Uh, so I realised that um, I got my first taste of stability. What I, I mean, I felt really stable here. I had this terrible realisation to think that you found stability in a whorehouse. I was so young. I was 17, you don't know anything about anything. 